Hi everyone. I want to talk about what does the birth of Jesus Christ mean for me as a believer? What does the birth of Jesus Christ mean? What is the significance of his birth? I grew up going to church. I understood basic foundational accounts of the Bible. I understood that Jesus was born a baby. I understood that he died and he rose again. And it never had any practical implication on my life. It's almost like a textbook. I read and I understood it and I had had knowledge, but I didn't have any practical application of it. So I want to share this with you because there might be somebody in the same situation that I was in. And by the grace of God, I pray that this video helps you. So we know the beginning of the world, God created Adam and Eve. And we know, we call it the fall, where they disobeyed God, um, sin entered the world. Okay, so now the world is filled with sin. So the bloodline is now corrupt of humanity and all of this world. I mean, it's not hard to look around and ask yourself why people do the things they do and why this world is so, as people would say, quote unquote, messed up because Satan is the ruler of this world and sin dominates this world, completely dominates this world. So God had a plan and that plan was Jesus Christ to redeem mankind to himself. But it didn't just redeem all men unto himself. Listen to what it did. So there was a fall. Sin covered the earth. And Satan had dominion. So Jesus came and he basically took that dominion back from Satan and handed it over unto those who would believe in him. That's why it says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That's why scripture says, he who believes in me shall do even greater things than I did. When Jesus walked the earth, he healed, he saved, he delivered, he raised people from the dead. Okay, Jesus, his birth was foretold by prophets of old. His, births were fore, his birth was foretold by many prophets of old. They prophesied that he would be a ruler. They prophesied about a scepter, that a ruler would come out of Judah, which is um, Jesus's lineage. They prophesied that um, he, would, he would be a ruler over all the nations and, and so much more. But let's just stick with those two. <coughs> so when Jesus walked the earth, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. Think about it. This world that we're living in right now, it's covered in sin. There's so much, there's so much nonsense that goes on. There's so much heartache, heartbreak, you know. So Jesus, his kingdom is not of this world. So those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who abide in him and he in them, they are able to walk forth in the kingdom that is not of this earth. What does that look like? Well, when Jesus walked the earth, he was the perfect representation of God the Father. He demonstrated he demonstrated God. He demonstrated who God is. What did Jesus do when he walked the earth? He set people free from demons. He healed the sick. These are all things that are caused by sin, right? So he came and basically redeemed them, said, brought them back to their original state, brought them back to the original state and the original plan that he had. He healed, he saved, he delivered. He even raised people from the dead. Yes, can you imagine that? That's like radical faith. Somebody who's abiding in Christ, somebody who's walking forth with Christ. <laughs> so Christ, he was born and he was raised up until he was about 30 years old. He started his ministry and for about three years, he ministered to people. Think about it. How long ago did Jesus walk the earth? Our whole calendar is even based on, on Jesus. We have before Christ and after Christ or or before death and after death right our whole calendar is based on on this man and his life so we're now in the year 2023 think about how many years it's been since Jesus was on this earth and yet we are still talking about him he still has a profound impact on this earth he didn't he didn't die and stay in the grave. No, he rose again. And when he rose again, he, he gave us his Holy Spirit. He gave us the Holy Spirit, which is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. 
the same spirit that he walked the earth with, the same spirit. <laughs> so those who believe in him can have power over the things of this world. Because scripture says, greater is he who lives in me, which is the Holy Spirit, than he who lives in this world. My kingdom is not of this world. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. He only did what he heard the father speak to him. He only did his father's will. He only did his father's will. And that's why he had to, he had to be immaculately conceived because the bloodline of humanity was tainted. The blood is tainted with sin. So the Lord had an amazing plan of redemption. And it doesn't just, you know, mean that when we believe in Jesus, we will be saved eternally. Oh, one day when we die, we'll be healed. No, no. He gave us his power and his authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Like that's a spiritual representation. He gave us dominion. He gave us power and dominion over the enemy and, and his rule and reign and the things on this earth that he controls. Why do you think Christians have been so persecuted from the beginning? Why do you think Christians have been so persecuted? Because there's power in it. I always asked myself that before I was a born again believer. I knew there was something about Jesus. I went to university and I learned all these different um, theologies and all these different doctrines, all, like all the things university teaches you. I learned about all the different religions. Um, and I would ask myself, okay, so there must be something about Jesus. I mean, I knew there was because I had quite an experience when I was a teenager, but there must be something about Jesus. The fact that he is persecuted, his people are persecuted the most. I don't see Buddhists being persecuted. I don't see Hindu believers being persecuted. I don't see all those other religions that believe in other gods, other deities. I don't see them being persecuted. It's only the believers in Christ Jesus. Churches are burned. I mean, I'm sure there there may be other events. There might be some people listening that are saying, oh yeah, well, I'm of this religion and, and um, your people have, in, have done things to my religion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going there. If you just look at the general scheme of things, if you look at the big picture of all the religions in this world, constantly that's what, that's what we're hearing is Christians in third world countries, you know, losing their lives because they proclaim that they believe in Jesus. Why does it bother people so much that we believe in Jesus? I mean, it doesn't bother me that you believe in Buddha. I don't, I don't come around and start burning your Buddhist temple because you believe in Buddha. Do you know why? Because Buddha has no power. And I say that with all due respect. Buddha has no power. All these other religions, you know, I'm thinking of a scripture right now in the Bible that says like all these sacrifices are unto demons. Satan is the ruler of this world and he has minions that parade around with him and they are demons. They are fallen angels. Anyhow, what I want to explain to you is this. The birth of Jesus Christ, it brought so many things. Even scripture says when he died, he gave, he gave gifts unto men. He gave us spiritual things as believers in Christ, that we might walk forth and fulfill and complete his plan of redemption and restoration, the gifts of the spirit that he gives his people, the power and the authority he gives us, the Holy Spirit, all of these things. He is alive and he is alive forevermore and he will return. He will return and he will restore the, like the, everything will be complete at his return. Everything will be complete at his return. Everything. Each one of us, we have a plan and a purpose. God has a plan and a purpose for us as a believer in Christ Jesus. And it's not just to walk this earth and believe in him and go to church and do man-made traditions and things. It's so much more than that, guys, I'm telling you. I mean, I grew up in a church. I knew nothing about speaking in tongues. I, I never saw any manifestation of the Holy Spirit in, in, in the church I was at. I never saw signs, miracles, wonders. I never saw healing. I never saw deliverance. It's not until you see these things and you experience Jesus Christ for yourself, you have an understanding, wow, okay, this is what Jesus came to do when he walked the earth. He just cleanses you, purifies you, you know, removes all the sin from you. And causes you to be, again, in right standing with him. Because scripture says that the wages of sin are death. That means like the consequences of sin is death, eternal, like eternal death. But God sent his only son, Jesus, that through the world, you might, through him, you might be saved. That he might save the world. 
That's why he's called the savior of the world. But it's only those who believe in him, who trust in him, who rely on him, that can receive what he died for. They can receive the things of Christ Jesus. So it, it's honestly, it's amazing. I, I don't even know what else to say except for I have experienced Jesus myself. I've been in a traditional church where I saw no move of the Holy Spirit. And then I sought out, there has to be more to life than this. You know, there's more to just this story about Jesus that walked the earth. And he did all these signs, miracles, and wonders. But, you know, we're, we're raised to believe. I mean, I didn't even read much of my Bible um, growing up. I didn't even hear a lot of gospel stories growing up. Accounts, I should say. I don't like to say stories because they're true. They happened. Accounts. It's amazing. It's amazing. It wasn't until I started to seek him for myself and I found a church that was that was filled with the Holy Spirit that I became filled with the Holy Spirit. I, be, I speak in tongues. I have, you know, operated in in the power of Christ and it is absolutely amazing and I thank God I thank God so please if you know I would encourage you if you're hearing this message for the first time and like and it sounds foreign to you that um, believers in Christ can walk forth in the same power that Jesus walked the earth with I really encourage you to read your Bible don't just be fed from the pulpit read your Bible pray talk to God you'll see as you start to read scripture the Holy Spirit will speak to you and you'll start to see. You'll start to have revelation and understanding. And it is absolutely incredible. It is incredible. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that you would open the eyes of the blind. I pray, Jesus, that those who are hungering and thirsting and desiring you, that they would dive into your word, Father, and that you would speak to them powerfully. In the mighty name of Jesus, just as you, as you has, have predestined from the time you sent your son Jesus to this world to reconcile all men unto yourself, I pray, Father, that you would draw those whom you have predestined unto yourself through this video. I pray that somebody has knowledge and understanding that they didn't have before about what the birth of Jesus Christ really meant and what you did when you walked the earth and when you died, Father. In Jesus' name, let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen.